This is the RoboSpot Remote Follow Spot system. Today we're going to go over the basic setup, but we'll go into more detail about networking and multi-device control in upcoming videos. The RoboSpot can function both as a standalone controller or in conjunction with the lighting console. You can control up to 12 fixtures from one base station, but make sure you dedicate one universe per RoboSpot. Please make sure you have the latest software in both your fixtures and your base station. Also make sure your console's fixture profile has the RoboSpot attributes in the control channel. Let's start with the connections. The RoboSpot outputs DMX and RDM via the 5-pin XLR in the back. If you're going to use a DMX splitter or distribution network, make sure that it's RDM compliant. That DMX in isn't active, so don't try to connect anything to it. You'll see two RJ45 jacks on the back. One is for the video signal from your fixture's camera. That signal uses RTSP, real-time streaming protocol. This means you can use a network switch to combine and distribute the video signal from multiple cameras to one RoboSpot. The other jack is for streaming control input from your lighting console. That signal can be ArtNet, Streaming ACN, or MANet. And last, a True One power connection. When you first start up your RoboSpot, it does a fixture discovery using RDM. It will find and identify any compatible Roby fixtures on that DMX line. Today we're going to set this up with one T1 follow spot as a standalone system. Now let's take a look at the small touchscreen on the control panel. I've disabled the password protection, which you can do in the settings menu, but just in case, the default password is 5242. The first thing we need to do is map some of the fixtures functions to the encoder wheels and faders. Let's select Functions Mapping. Now you'll see a list of all the available fixture functions. First, select Dimmer from the list. Now you'll see blinking LEDs on the available buttons. These four buttons belong to the encoder wheels, and the bottom two are for the faders on the handles. Let's put the dimmer on the left fader. Simply press the button that corresponds to the left fader, and now let's put the iris on the right fader. Select the iris from the list, then press the right fader button. Now let's put zoom and focus on the first two encoder wheels. First select zoom, and now, press the button for this encoder. Same thing for focus. Select it from the list, then press the button above the encoder. Now you see we have dimmer and iris control on the faders. And to enable the wheels, just press the button above each one. Now we have zoom and focus on these two encoder wheels. These four buttons are for enabling the four encoder wheels, but the other 12 buttons can be used to store presets with values from the wheels as well as pan and tilt values. Let's record a couple of presets with zoom and focus. First, let's set the values we want to record. Now, hold down the button you want to save those values to. The blinking LEDs tell you what you can record onto that button. You see the four encoder wheels blinking as well as the pan and tilt buttons on the right. In this case, we just want zoom and focus, so let's press both of those. Now, hold down your target button until the LEDs stop blinking. Let's try another one with zoom and focus. First, let's change the values. Then, hold down your target button. Now select zoom and focus, and hold down the target button to confirm. That's it. Now we have two zoom and focus presets. Let's talk about the pan and tilt button. You can use them to enable and disable just the handles. This is useful when you're running out of range on the handles, or you just want to get the handles back in a comfortable position. Just press the buttons to disable the pan and tilt, and move the handles to their home position. Then press the two buttons again to re-enable the handles. Now let's take a look at the large touchscreen. At the upper left, you'll find the virtual fader button. This is a good window to have open during setup because it lets you see the values that the handles are outputting in real time. Since it's a touchscreen, you can also move these values by hand. You can also control the camera zoom from here. And the track control. And this uses the M speed channel on the fixture to set acceleration curves for the movement. Smooth works well in most cases. Fast gives you the quickest response and medium and slow helps smooth out movements for when your operator has had one too many double espressos before the show. 
Now you may have noticed these virtual faders in red up here, and they're yellow down on the small screen. The handles and the encoder wheels have three different resolution settings. To change the setting, simply hold down the button that corresponds to that function. Red is the lowest resolution, but gives you the widest range of motion. Now, I'll hold down the pan tilt buttons until the faders change to green. Green is the highest resolution, which is great for long throw distances or when you need small, precise movements, but it does limit your range of motion. Hold down the buttons again and the faders change to yellow, which is the medium resolution. This is a good starting point if you haven't used the different resolutions before. Now let's jump over to the user menu icon. And let's skip down to position buttons. And let's turn them on. Now you'll see a virtual bar at the bottom of your main screen. Position buttons are another type of preset that are really useful for setting starting points for your operator. These buttons can store pan tilt as well as the camera zoom, the pan tilt resolution, the track speed, and the zoom and focus. Now let's pretend you have a two-part show with a near stage and a far stage. and We want to set up a starting point for each part of the show. First, let's set our pan tilt position. Now this will be our near stage, so the red resolution is perfect. We've zoomed all the way out, and we'll set our zoom and focus. Now, simply press the plus button on that virtual bar. And we've created our first position preset. Now, let's move to our far stage position. Let's bring in the camera zoom a bit, change the zoom and focus, and let's change to the green resolution on the handles. Now, press the plus button again, and we've added our second position button. So let's look at our two starting positions. Position one zooms out the camera, sets up the pan and tilt position and resolution, as well as the zoom and focus. Now let's fade out and go to our second position. Press the position button, fade up our intensity, and now our handles are in high resolution, our camera is zoomed in a bit, and the operator is ready for the second part of the show. Now let's go back to that user menu. Just below position buttons, you'll see color buttons. Let's turn them on. Now you see a second virtual bar at the bottom of the screen. If you touch the plus button, you'll bring up a color picker, which lets you select a color or change the CTO level. Once you've found the color you like, just press save and you've created a new color button. To release the color values, just press this arrow button. This should get you started with RoboSpot operation, but read through the manual that's found online at roby.cc. And if you still have any questions, send an email to info at robylighting.com and we'll make sure to get you in touch with someone to help you. Keep an eye out for the next RoboSpot training videos and thank you for watching.